grade 6 math number 12.5a, perfect squares and square roots. Do you remember that the area of a square can be written as a equals side times side, or s with the little 2 exponent for s squared? When a number is multiplied to itself, we say squared. So the area for this square would be a equals s with the little 2 exponent up here, meaning side times side. A perfect square is the product of a number and itself. 5 squared is equal to 5 times 5, which equals 25. We say that the 5 is the square root of 25. Just like the root of a tree helps the tree to grow to the big thing that it is, this little 5 helps the 25 to expand to the big thing that it is. So the root is the smaller number, see? And once it's squared, then that's the bigger number. This is written as this symbol. It's like a check mark on a long division sign. See? Just like that. The square root of 25 equals 5. Any square shape that has a side of 5 units and a base of 5 units has 25 square units inside of it. 5 times 5 is 25. See? It's 5 going this way, 5 going this way, so it's 25. Other perfect squares are 4, 9, 16, 36, 49, 64, because 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 6 times 6 is 36. See, you multiply the number to itself, and it makes that product. So that is the square root of the number, see? The inverse operation for squaring is to unsquare them, or for square roots, to square them. So if you had a 4 and you wanted to do an inverse operation, you could do 2 times 2. If you had 81, you could do 9 times 9. The inverse operation for a 10 times 10 squared would be 100, see? 6 times 6 is 36, see? If we're given a square and it says A is equal to, the area is equal to 225 square units, we find the side length of the square shape by finding out what times what equals that 225. Well, guess and check would be the best way to do it. So we need to figure out what times what, the same number times itself, is equal to 225. So what I did was I tried 13 times 13, but I immediately got a 9. Now, knowing that I'm multiplying two-digit numbers, I know that 9 would drop down into the product, see? And I was like, stop, no way, it needs a 5. 14 times 14 would be 4 times 4, which is 16, which puts a 6 there. Nope, it needs a 5. So when I did 15 times 15, and I saw that 5 times 5 was 25, and that 5 was going to drop, I knew I was on the right track. So I finished multiplying, came up with the 225, and I knew that the sides were 15. See? So how about this problem? Bob covered his square front porch with square paper blocks. The area of the porch is 36 foot squared. So how many 6 inch square paper blocks will he need? So here's his front porch. It's 6 feet one way and 6 feet the other way. And 6 times 6 is the 36 square feet that the porch equals. Well, Bob thought, you know what? Each square foot can hold four of these six-inch square pavers. Six inches and six inches makes one foot this way, and six inches and six inches makes one foot this way. So he's going to fit four paver blocks into each of these square feet. Bob is smart. So because each one-foot square area can hold four of those six-inch paver blocks, he multiplied the 36-foot squared by four and came up with 144 paver blocks that he would need to pave his front porch. Chances are he'd be smarter to buy a few extra ones in case they broke, but that's how many he would need to actually cover his front porch, see? All right, so we discussed perfect squares and how they work out perfectly when you multiply 5 times 5 or 9 times 9 or 10 times 10. But what happens when they're not perfect? Well. Watch the next video, 12.5b, and we'll discuss 
squares that are not perfect. Hope to see you there. Bye.